paper so you can get that ideal one-to-one -one ratio, molecule for molecule, as a starting point. But you know that you still need to do your blood work. Vigorous Steve here with the Vigorous Q&A for all of your bodybuilding related questions. Today's question is from Awesome Austin Fit. What is a good ratio for testosterone base and a non-aromatizing compound like primabolin or masterone to have a lower or no need for an aromatized inhibitor? Similar way to put it, how much testosterone and how much masterone or primo not to use in AI? Well, I've said it many times before on this YouTube channel, all you need is a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, of course, this is a very simple answer and not what you expect of me, so let me dive into it a little bit more scrutinously. And before we do, please like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell button while you're at it so you can get notified whenever a new video drops. I always said a one-to-one -one ratio because it's easy. It's easy to follow. You don't have to calculate the ester weight. You don't have to think about which individual esters because testosterone comes in many different esters and masterone has two different esters and primo has only one ester. So if I say, for example, 250 milligrams testosterone plus 250 milligrams primo or 250 milligrams masterone, the ester is kind of irrelevant and you'll still get proper aromatized inhibiting effects. Keep in mind that dihydrotestosterone derivatives, boldenone, dihydroboldenone, and some of their metabolites act as a reversely binding aromatized inhibitor in a similar fashion that arimidex or letrozolfamera act as a reversely binding aromatized inhibitor. You have aromacin, which is steroidal. It is a suicide inhibitor. Aromacin, due to its chemical composition, gets stuck in the aromatized enzyme, rendering it inactive. So this aromatized enzyme is no longer able to convert testosterone into estradiol or deanabol into methyl estradiol for that matter. And you would need further aromatized enzyme expression in adipose tissue to restore the amount of aromatized enzymes which you just murdered with exemestane or aromacin. Keep that in mind, all of the other aromatized inhibitors are reversely binding. That means they go into the aromatized enzyme, stay there for a minute or longer. I'm not exactly sure how long they stay within because it also depends on which compounds enters the aromatized enzyme and temporarily inhibits aromatization of aromatizable compounds, after which, due to entropy, the dihydrotestosterone derivative or the boldenone or the dihydroboldenone or the arimidex or the letrozole exits the aromatized enzyme, after which testosterone, deanabol, anything else that's aromatizable can enter the aromatized enzyme again and convert into its respective metabolite. So the reason why I came up with the one-to-one -one ratio is because when you look at it logically, the amount of testosterone which is able to convert into estradiol through the aromatized enzymes needs to be blocked with an equal amount of a dihydrotestosterone derivative, boldenone or dihydroboldenone, preventing the use of an aromatized inhibitor. And this is how I came up with the one-to-one -one ratio. For each single testosterone molecule, you would need one molecule of a reversely binding aromatized inhibitor, which would temporarily block the conversion of testosterone into estradiol by taking its place in the aromatized enzyme. Now, of course, that sounds very, very simple, and it's very, very easy to follow. So let's say you take 500 milligrams of test, any ester, you would add on top 500 milligrams of Primo, any ester, or Masterone, any ester, or Boldenone, or Dihydroboldenone, any ester. Now, I feel that it doesn't really work as well with oral DHT derivatives, even though you may still get some aromatized inhibiting effects. Most notably, Provirin is known to inhibit the conversion of testosterone into estradiol, and Winstrol and Anivar might potentiate that to a very low extent. Again, the relative binding affinities for the aromatized enzymes haven't been established, neither have the relative binding affinities for the sexual binding globulin. We only know the relative binding affinities for the androgen receptor and the mineral glucocorticoid receptors, and the glucocorticoid receptors, and the estrogen alpha and beta receptors, right? The receptors are known, but the enzymes and the delivery mechanisms, the albumin and the SHBG, unfortunately unknown. So we have to go by blood work, a one-to-one -one ratio of testosterone and a steroidal non-suicidal aromatized inhibitor is a good place to start. And then after a month on that protocol, keeping your injection frequency and your dosing the same, a month into it, it's, please go do your blood work. See where your serum estradiol levels are at. Test your serum estradiol levels before. Check them during your cycle and see if you need further 
adjustments. Maybe you have a lot of aromatase enzyme expression, or maybe you don't have so much because your body fat levels are generally lower. Or you've been dieting for a while, this entire month you've dropped body fat, reducing the amount of adipose tissue that you have, and thus reducing the amount of aromatase enzymes and the potential for aromatization that you have. So you always need to stay on top of your ratios between testosterone and the other steroid which inhibits the conversion. And if your blood work tells you your estrogen is going too high, maybe you need to increase this steroid that it's inhibiting the conversion or change your ratio. Maybe you're happy using 500 milligrams in total per week. And instead of using 250 milligrams of tests and let's say 250 milligrams of Primo, you reduce the test to 200 milligrams and increase the Primo to 300 milligrams. So again, this one-to-one -one ratio is just a starting point. Ultimately, it's your blood work that determines which ratio you need to follow. And you know what I'll do for all of you nerdy guys out there that are just as nerdy as I am? I'll use the Avrocados constant to calculate how many milligrams of testosterone you would need to match a mastrone, primobolin, or boldenone, or dihydroboldenone, regardless of esters, how many milligrams of each you would need to get the exact same amount of molecules. I've done videos about this in the past. It didn't get so many views. So hopefully we can mix it into this one. Based on the Avogadro's constant, you would get a certain amount of molecules. I think it's 602.11 sextillion or quintillion molecules. I'll have to do a quick refresher. So it'll be on the screen on one of these sides. This amount of milligrams for each testosterone ester would yield the same, exact same amount of molecules for this amount of milligrams of a steroidal reversely binding aromatized inhibitor. So you can get that ideal one-to-one -one ratio molecule for molecule as a starting point. But you know that you still need to do your blood work to determine if this ratio is working for you or not. And again, if you can't pinpoint it down, go back to TRT, use 100 milligrams of testosterone per week, space that over daily micro-administrations subcutaneously, in which case, most likely, you don't need an aromatase inhibitor as well. And otherwise, there's always methane, 100 milligrams in the morning and 100 milligrams in the evening to help with the metabolism of estradiol into estrone and estriol, reducing the overall estrogenic burden of the exogenous testosterone that you're getting. I think this answers your questions pretty much. Hope it was helpful. Hope you can decide which route to go with your testosterone and your DHT derivative or other compounds which will inhibit the conversion of testosterone into estradiol. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the description section. Have a look at some of my sponsors and affiliates so you can save yourself some money while shopping online. And if you want to check your serum estradiol levels, head over to merrickhealth.com vigorous for a budget panel which includes estradiol and a couple other markers so you can stay on top of your health and get 10% off using the Vigors discount codes. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. Front double bicep for the Vigors crew, no aromatized inhibitors required because I'm matching my testosterone to Primo to Nandrolone, hopefully in an ideal ratio, but then again, I'll do blood work every month to see if I need to adjust this ratio further. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.